more! It is January 12th, 2022. So this is the day we're releasing the series. I feel like it's taken an infinite amount of time to get here, but also it's taken zero time to get here. But one thing's for sure, there's no turning back now. So we're gonna watch all of Wes's cuts, all the way through. Taylor's dropped the, the first cut of the trailer. Yeah. Staying on schedule right now, feeling good. Hey guys, that is a picture wrap on Shell the series. It's a hot day, 92 degrees in October. I haven't changed at all. Congratulations, that is a wrap on day one. Okay, it is September 22nd. Uh, I believe today is the first day of autumn. Wong Fu has had a very interesting year. Uh, we just wrapped and uh, released Strangers Never Again, uh, the sequel to Strangers Again 10 years later. The fact that we went back to a property that you know Phil, Ted, and myself made so long ago, one of the most popular things, and we, we came back to it and finished that story was really special. And here we are doing that again with Shell. Shell was made 10 years ago. It was a short film, just two scenes to capture a feeling, really. I had no idea that I'd be here 10 years later uh, writing the follow-up. And it's also the longest thing I've written solo. Wong Fu has done a lot of series, but I was never part of the writing process in those. We announced the Shell sequel at the start of 2021, but I had actually thought about this idea since five to eight years ago. So the sequel to Shell is actually about expanding that world and that universe, and it's more of a spiritual sequel than a direct follow-up. We're not following Chris and Mimi's character in that field or in that loft area. We're gonna follow completely new characters in a world where there are artificial memories. I've always, like, when there's an opportunity to inject a little bit, a bit of science fiction or fantasy into a short film that we do. Um, even everything before us, our feature film, has a little bit of science fiction to it. So as we speak, I have just finished uh, the first drafts of the three scripts, but we're within days of having like a locked script. So now that there's a roadmap of what we're gonna make, now we just go out and do it. We're casting right now, which is very exciting, to putting a face to the characters. Some of these locations I've had in my mind for a long time, so those have kind of trickled in. Um, other ones we have to go look for. So things are out of junction right now. This is really special to me, and I'm really excited to share with you guys the whole process. It's uh, day one location scouting. We're in Los Angeles. This is uh, the 10 freeway. Driven past this for like since 2007, many times. I've always seen this footbridge, and I thought this must look great at like golden hour. So here we are. I'm gonna shoot something here. Welcome. We are on our first day of location scouting, and uh, right now we're at a bridge. Wes has been dying to shoot at for uh, many years. And so uh, he's making it work for this story, which is really cool. Uh, so right now, um, there's, a, there's a walk and talk scene between Adam and Mabel, and uh, it's where they get to know each other. And they take a little detour and stop at this bridge. Bridges are kind of a metaphor in the whole, in the whole thing. Uh, a bridge is to where you want to go to and, and where you're coming from and connecting to people and also connecting memories. So. I thought it'd be nice to actually be at a physical bridge and this park has been on my mind for a while 
So actually the, the scene where they get to know each other is here, but also the very last scene of the entire series is also here. It talks about a very real, a real issue as, as we get older and our parents get older. So it's, it's nice to inject a little bit of that into a, a narrative piece. Yeah, there's like little parent, like Mabel and Fang's moments of just like the small moments of just typical parent dynamic stuff, yeah. like eat all your food kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like little grievances that she has with her dad yeah. from the past. It's like those are nice. You know, they add a lot of texture. I think there's a lot of children that that have a certain feel a certain responsibility, and, and it, it evolves into maybe guilt actually for not being with their parents as 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 we're separated by our work or distance and, and we know that they're getting older and a lot of that is translated through Mabel uh, even her confession of not not really being there when she knew she should have been All right, today we are making a little announcement video for our main channel to officially kind of let the world know that we are doing this series. We're doing it a little bit different than Strangers Again, having it, you know, seated like talking heads um, and really playing up the event of this brand new series. I think we're, we're going to take a, we're taking a different approach with this one. Uh, Strangers Again was like more comedic and lighthearted and I think I'm kind of formatting this one like one of those featurettes that you would see before uh, like a big blockbuster you know where we're the people behind the scenes are talking about the brand and the identity of shell connecting that with this new story uh, and it's the first time people are going to be hearing about this new concept this new direction that Wes is taking it um, and it, it is really cool it is cool to think about how much impact the first one had and, and the things that are being carried over All right, today is September 30th. We're about two weeks away from uh, principal photography. So we're heavy in pre-production. Um, a big part of that involves finding props. And um, for the original shell, we had not a lot of props. This is the original. I kept it for 10 years. Um, yeah, actually still works. This stuff I found um, while I was visiting my parents up in the Bay Area. This was in the garage. I know we had a lot of junk down there, but my uncle brought in even more stuff. Downstairs, we have this room. My, my uncle's like a very organized pack rat. I was kind of overwhelmed when I went in there because I, I was hoping to find a few things, gizmos and gadgets, and I ended up finding many, many things that will work. Um, just to show, Adam is kind of makeshift. But while I was looking, I also found something that was kind of crazy. I told Phil this idea when it was part of my senior project uh, at UCSD. So almost 20 years ago, my senior project, I thought like, what if the company made fake memories? You know, maybe five years after, I, I actually tried to write this short about a guy that deals memories. And uh, when I was in Amsterdam for a personal trip, I brought my camera and I said, you know what, let's shoot it. So I actually wrote like the first version of that short and I found my sides from it and this portion here the, char the character's name was Marcus at the time but this section is I, I literally just copy and paste this and put it in the new script because I knew that I wanted that so this is another piece of that uh, history of this this story that I've been wanting to tell pretty exciting and very fitting but let's jump into this so this is just miscellaneous junk so I'm just gonna fly through it my uncle collects everything, like broken things, uh, things that people don't want. You know, we got, we got like optics and um, like a goggle to like fix things. Um, I have no idea what this is. In a way, that can mean it can be anything. But a big part of the Shell sequel is this head headgear unit that uh, Adam uses. He puts it on the client and um, it plays an audio signal and it flashes like different colors and stuff to trigger certain brain waves. And that I couldn't find. And I originally wanted my brother to build it, but there was no time. And I was like, what could I find that covers your eyes and covers your ears? And it has like a head strap and adjustable. And I was like, 
a VR headset. I do want to make some mods to it to make it like a little bit more custom. So I don't want you to like, people to see it and just be like, oh, that's just a VR headset. It needs to be unique in a way. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes, this works. So that's what I'll be working on among other things. But uh, you'll recognize this in the short. What do you see, Jess? Hi, I see nothing. What do you want to remember? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Jessica. Not bad. Okay. That's our announcement video. I didn't think we'd be doing BTS of this, but uh, this is actually pretty exciting and kind of a, is a nice taste of what's to come. You guys have no idea. Actually, you do. You watched it already. I think last time uh, you guys saw this was about a week ago when the VR headset came in the mail. Basically the idea is to make something look just off enough so people don't recognize what it is, but also have them recognize what it is. I'm gonna add this little like ticker unit to make it look even more gizmatic. So what we're doing is we're giving it an analog look so that there's just stuff to look at. Pretty happy with how that looks. We're not done yet. Oh. Prototype, unit 01, okay, that's and, cool. and that's the final touch. This is, already giving, this is already giving me a better understanding of the art direction that the props are going towards. I was thinking a little more, a little more future, but this, this is kind of like Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. Do you like it? Punk retro. I like it. Cool. So it is the last week of pre-production for Shell 2 and things are happening. I'm stressed. Everything's happening all at once, but <laughs> it's okay. Um, we have a lot of things planned for this, this week and we have a lot of things that still need to be locked in. Generally, most of our locations are locked. We're just waiting on the school, which is where we're gonna be shooting our track and field scene. Lock in all our wardrobe for all our cast, which we'll be doing throughout the week and finding the last few bits of our props, which is a very big part of this production. This week, we are doing a table read with most of our cast. I'll pass it to us. Hi. <laughs> very exciting news. We actually locked in our two main leads, uh, which is a major step for any production. So Adam is gonna be played by the one and only Lawrence Cow. You might have seen him in Wu Assassins on Netflix or uh, from here on out uh, on our channel, which is a very um, introspective, kind of heartfelt uh, short film that did really well in. And Mabel is going to be played by Porter Duong, who is a longtime friend of Wong Fu Productions. She was in a lot of sketches. Uh, I think she was in Race You, she was in, uh, she was in Yappy for a little bit, and uh, she's also in um, This Is Us on TV. We got two you know, major players that are coming in to help us out tell the story. Hey everyone, today is our table read. Uh, it's the first time our cast is all in the same space and meeting each other. Um, very exciting because uh, for the crew, it's the first time we get to hear the voices come to life all at once. You know, it's slowly becoming more and more real. It's, it's really fun to bring people together and uh, make, some, make some stories. I'm nervous, not because I'm unsure, but this is just something that happens, you know, for I get nervous for things I care about, and I care about this a lot, so no turning back now. <laughs> Hi, I'm V Kumari. I am reading for Priya. I'm Lawrence Cow. I'm reading for Adam. Um, I'm Porter. I'm reading for Mabel. And I'm Chris. I am reading for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we're spending too much time together. And what are you doing for that other gentleman? 
is miraculous. We haven't gotten any answers. What exactly are you doing? How, how did the table read you again? However you want them how to. Do, how about them? <laughs> next week, we're starting next week. Um, still a lot of work to do on our part, but um, glad you guys can all make it and hear, meet and hear each other. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Like, it's an option. We do have long enough rails to go. Right now, I am with Chris, who is going to be the director of photography for this project, many Wong Fu projects. But we have our scripts and we are going over uh, our shot list. So this is way more organized than how we did things back in the day when I first made Shell. But we're actually going line by line and establishing where camera's gonna be, where actor's gonna be, so that there's no surprises on the day of. At least we can be as prepared as we can. I told Chris that I wouldn't mind like longer takes uh, wider takes so that we kind of stay with the actors longer. A lot of natural light. Yes, a lot of natural light. What I've said since my day one at Wong Fu Productions, whenever I make something, is uh, you should be able to freeze frame any part of the short, or that, that could be a photo. Mm -hmm. I want that feeling in anything I make. I, I hope it shows, but <laughs> I want it to look good. It's kind of finding the beauty in like very everyday you know, you could say in a more brooding or sl in a slower fashion, but you can still find uh, beauty and intimacy in, yeah. in those images. But yeah. this one's not going to be, I'll say it's, it's not going to be as stylized or uh, artsy as Shell. Like, this, this is way more grounded. I hope that when people watch this, um, they're able to let that go because I think a lot of people are expecting that aesthetic. 24-7 golden hour and like hazy views, but mm. we're, we're going a little a little grittier this time, uh, a little bit more grounded. Yeah. Or where I just come back and just kind of... Okay, so we're about to revisit uh, the original field where we shot Shell. Wasn't planning on using this location, but um, I did write something for it and I was like, you know what, it'd be really nice to actually use the same spot. But it's been 10 years, so a lot has changed. Since then, it looks like we got some new fences. It wasn't actually the park that, that everyone thinks we went to. We went to this area next to the park. This area, which turns out to be like a retreat center for a church or something, which is great, which is like gonna attract filmmakers because it looks great. It doesn't look so great anymore, but this is definitely where we walked up. At the time, it was like, two, like five of us, five people total. So it wasn't a really big production at all. But we walked up this. If you look right there, that's the tree. Um, at least the tree's still there. These walls are up for a reason. I'm not gonna be squeezing through any fences to get to that. We'll have to find something else. We'll find something else. But it's nice to see this place still exists. And it's not just in my memories. Today is the day before day one of production. Uh, we're actually about five minutes away from going into our first pre-production meeting, our first and last of this phase of pre-production, which is really exciting. Everyone did their part to get us to where we are today. Um, I've been talking a lot, but everyone else behind the scenes is doing their work. So I'm super excited, and thanks for following the journey up to this point. Now it's gonna be just non-stop decision-making and a lot of fun and a lot of seeing fiction become reality. So, thanks.